All right, here tonight with Reaction, author of the brand new book, Sold Out, How High-Tech Billionaires and Bipartisan Beltway Crap Weasels Are Screwing America's Best and Brightest Workers, Michelle Malkin, Immigration Attorney Francisco Hernandez, and from the Washington Times, it's Charles Hurt. Uh, all right, Francisco, let me just start Hi, with Mr. you on this question. If you're from Central sure. America, if you're from El Salvador, if you're from Nicaragua, and you go into Mexico illegally, do you know what happens to you when you get caught? What happens? It, it is horrible. It's horrible. It's inhumane. It's horrible, humane treatment. You, inhumane you treatment. get put in jail. I agree with you. You get put in jail or you get deported. Correct. Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's, ter it's dangerous. Okay. It's so that nasty. Happens yeah. there. Now, Michelle Malkin, I personally think that this discussion is meaningless until we get the border secure. Every Republican Absolutely. candidate wants to secure the border. Do you agree yes. that we should do that first and finally get it done because they haven't gotten it done up to this point? Well, and I've I would agreed with that, you on that. I, I, would, I would tweak that slightly. It's not just a matter of securing the border first. It's first, always, and forever. Securing the border is an eternally vigilant task, duty of the federal government. And what I have to say about the Trump plan, I like the fact that the open borders lobby is absolutely going bananas in both the left and the right, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and the La Raza types, because he's calling <laughs> no. the bluff, as I have called the bluff of these people for decades now. It's the elephant in the room among the GOP ele elephants in the room, and it really does reveal the true colors of the likes of John Kasich and Jeb Bush, and yes, Marco Rubio, who was on the wrong side during the Gang of Eight debate, in prioritizing who we should put first. Francisco, it is not inhumane for any country that calls itself sovereign to protect its own people first. That's what that's Mexico what does, and that's what the United States well, should do. But that's not what I said. All I'm saying is listen to what Donald Trump is saying. He is the most immigration reform advocate that I've heard this year. He's saying if they'll go back, he will create a system where they can come back legally. So you support Donald listen, Trump? no one, no one, it, no, 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 no. But no one is more against undocumented immigration than undocumented immigrants. Guys, come on, Mr. Hannity, we've they already talked about this. Build your wall. You're going to need 100,000 Mexicans legalized just to build it. passports. Yeah, well, I don't, we have 94.5 million Americans out of the labor force and 50 million Americans in poverty and 46 million Americans well, on food stamps. I think we can find the and, workers. And uh, the Charles, reason that they went I, back I, after, I, Charles, after Eisenhower was because if you there look were no at more the, jobs after those soldiers came back from Vietnam. Well, I saw the pictures and people didn't look like they were all that upset as they were walking back into Mexico when I saw some of the images in the paper today. Charles, You're Hurt, right. Charles, let me ask You're you. You're right. Because this is an important aspect of where this debate is in the country, and the polls show that the American people and Republican voters agree with Trump. Oh, I think uh, well, in both Trump parties, the majority of voters uh, agree with what Trump is saying. And when he talks about a deportation force, he's not talking about anything radical. He's talking about what we already have, Border Patrol and Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agencies uh, to do already. All he's talking about doing is actually enforcing the laws that we have on the books. And there's nothing well, inhumane about it. I would argue that what is truly, <laughs> truly inhumane is to send a signal to all across South America that draws tens of thousands of children to be enslaved, to be to be kidnapped, to be you had girls oh, who were taking oh birth goodness. control pills you before they went on their venture because they were so certain oh they were going God. to be raped. That you is the most inhumane a, a thing you can do to people the American to draw dream. to draw all of these uh, illegals to coming streaming across the border as children. Right. Let me go, I can't think of anything more inhumane. Let me go. Uh, this is now expanding. I'm all, all the Republican candidates and the Democratic candidates are all weighing in on it. Here's Ted Cruz versus Marco Rubio. Let's watch this. It is not complicated that on the seminal fight over amnesty, it comes the Gang of Eight Bill. That was the brainchild of Chuck Schumer and Barack Obama. That would have granted amnesty to 12 million people here illegally that I stood with the American people and led the fight to defeat it in the United States Congress. The lesson of 2013 when I was involved in a bill in the Senate, the lesson I learned from that is the people of the United States do not trust the federal government on immigration. And you're going to have to prove to them that illegal immigration is under control. 
Michelle, what is your yeah, reaction? I, I, yeah, so let, let me give you my reaction. Okay. Because uh, informed citizens need to know that when push came to shove, Ted Cruz was on the right side and Marco Rubio was on the wrong side. And even though he's had this late-breaking campaign epiphany about Gang of Eight, <laughs> the fact is that he was in the hip pocket of the open borders lobby, and he remains so. There His main no funder is, is a bil billionaire hedge fund manager who was one of the biggest advocates and cheerleaders for the Gang of Eight amnesty. And people have to judge that record it versus the amnesty. rhetoric. Francisco? Of course oh my it was. Goodness, this, it was a mass blanket pardon. And by the way, the Obama executive well, amnesties, which just got a which just got a huge nullification by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, grant millions, millions of not only deportation waivers, but this is the key point now that is becoming the most germane point in this campaign work authorization documents that negatively affect millions of American workers, as Sean has said, who are out of work, unemployed, and underemployed. And that is the key focus of this campaign. And well, you can add to that. Was that, was that on, a Francisco, question for me, or was it like in my add, house? I you just got to stay quiet that, and listen. The billions and billions of dollars that have been spent on our educational system, our health care system, and criminal justice system. People didn't respect our laws and sovereignty, Francisco. Shouldn't that be a prerequisite before ever getting the Mr. opportunity Hannon. of staying in the country? Uh, you know, provide the opportunity. You and I have talked about this. Create the line. Create the application process. It's all about a process. I, I asked you We've a question. We've talked about it before. Shouldn't it be a prerequisite that if you want to come to America, you've got to first respect our laws, respect our sovereignty? That. Shouldn't that be a I prerequisite? That. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is. I agree with you. Sign me up. All right, so slick, imm slick immigration lawyers. Here's the thing, viewers. Slick immigration lawyers always say, of course, <laughs> we respect the process when their entire livelihoods depend on undermining every last letter of the law immigration that protects lawyers work American within workers the law. and American We're, citizens. Charles That's Wade why the Gang within, of Eight bill is thousands and thousands I of guess, pages, because immigration lawyers and lobbyists like you are not looking out for the people. <laughs> Charles? You've been talking to my wife not to let me say anything. Charles, <laughs> you know there is a line, and it start, and it's outside of the country, and and there are a lot of people who are in that line waiting to come in here legally. They're people we want, and they they they're yes. dying to come to America people because it dying. is a nation right. of laws, and and you're right. Uh, and, All right, Francisco, and, and you have these people that are trying to Go undermine ahead. it. <laughs> Reach on. What do you Reach want on? to add? Oh, listen, that's it. People are dying to get here. I can't say it any other way. This is the American dream. Ms. Malkin paints it as though it's, it's the worst life ever, that they're getting abused. Listen, they're all happy if they're working. The unemployment rate among undocumented is incredibly, incredibly low. Plus, because they're Trump, driving I think down he's a plan for the Clintons. Take, wait a minute. They're driving down wages and, and taking jobs that Americans would otherwise have. 94.5 well, million Americans out of the labor force. Well, if the if the Americans if the citizens were going to get up on a roof and and, and pour concrete, I guess they would be out of a job. You You're right, Francisco. I did that work. I washed dishes. I was a cook. Yes. I was a busboy, waiter, bartender. I I painted houses, laid tile, uh, framed houses, and did roofing. I did it all too for decades of my life. You know life. how you saw this? I got the solution for you. All right, Give I got to go. Give a private a private cause of action right for any employee that's denied a job for an undocumented alien to sue the right, employer go. for you. damages. Michelle, that congratulations on your book. Good to see you both thank all. You. Thank you.